Marcus Johnson's days were predictable, a comforting routine of work and home. He wasn't one to stray from his usual path or get involved in anything beyond his quiet, peaceful life. On this particular evening, however, as he was driving back from his shift at the local hardware store, something unusual caught his eye. A car was pulled over on the side of the road, its hazard lights flashing against the backdrop of the setting sun. Curiosity tugged at him, and as Marcus slowed down, he saw a woman standing beside the vehicle, clearly distressed. Pulling over, Marcus approached cautiously, noticing the woman's frantic pacing around her car. She looked out of place, dressed in a sleek business suit, her blonde hair messy from the wind. She was trying and failing to change a flat tire, her hands shaking as she struggled with the tools. When Marcus offered to help, her relief was immediate, though there was something about her that seemed off, a tension that didn't match the simple inconvenience of a flat tire. As Marcus got to work, the woman introduced herself as Sarah. She was grateful, constantly thanking him, but her eyes darted nervously to the road as if expecting someone or something to appear. Marcus chalked it up to stress. After all, being stranded alone on a quiet road could make anyone anxious. After changing the tire, Marcus waved off her offer of money, reassuring her that it was no trouble. She thanked him one last time before driving off, leaving Marcus standing there, unsettled by her nervous energy. For Marcus, helping others came naturally. He was the type of person who would go out of his way to lend a hand, whether it was helping a neighbor with yard work or stopping to assist a stranger on the road. The encounter with Sarah had been no different, at least on the surface. As he drove home that evening, he felt a small sense of satisfaction from having helped someone in need. It was an ordinary good deed, something that most people would do without a second thought. But as the evening wore on, something about the encounter with Sarah lingered in his mind. Her gratitude had seemed genuine, but her nervousness felt out of place. He replayed the interaction in his head, her rushed goodbye, the way her hands had trembled, and the way her eyes had constantly scanned the road, almost as if she were expecting someone to show up. It wasn't the first time Marcus had helped a stranger, but something about Sarah's behavior gnawed at him. Marcus shrugged it off, telling himself that it wasn't his concern. Maybe she had a bad day at work, or maybe she was just anxious about being stranded on the side of the road. Either way, he had done his part and moved on. Little did Marcus know, his small act of kindness had set off a chain of events that would soon change his life in ways he couldn't have imagined. The road where Marcus had encountered Sarah was one of those lonely stretches of highway that felt isolated from the world. It wasn't heavily trafficked, especially at dusk, when most people had already made their way home. The sun had dipped low on the horizon, casting long shadows over the landscape. Sarah had been alone out there, her car pulled over awkwardly on the shoulder, and the scene had an eerie stillness to it. Marcus couldn't help but think how vulnerable she must have felt before he stopped. As Marcus worked on changing the tire, he couldn't help but notice how out of place Sarah seemed. She wasn't dressed for the task, and her hands fumbled with the tools in a way that suggested she had never done this before. Her desperation was palpable, and though she tried to make small talk, her voice carried an edge of panic that she couldn't quite hide. Every few minutes, she would glance over her shoulder as if expecting someone or something to approach from down the road. Despite the oddness of the situation, Marcus remained focused on the task at hand. He didn't ask too many questions, figuring that whatever was troubling Sarah wasn't his business. But the feeling that something was off continued to grow. The isolation of the road, the fading daylight, and Sarah's anxious behavior combined to create an unsettling atmosphere. As Marcus finished the tire change, he couldn't shake the sense that this encounter was more than it seemed. As Marcus worked quickly to change the tire, he couldn't help but notice Sarah's constant jittery movements. Every few moments, she would glance down the road, her eyes darting back and forth as if she expected someone to appear at any moment. Her hands, trembling slightly, fidgeted with the strap of her purse and she barely seemed to focus on the tire change happening before her. Marcus tried to reassure her with a few casual remarks about how the flat would be fixed in no time, but her responses were short, distracted. He could feel the tension rolling off her in waves, but he didn't press her for details. 
People had their reasons for being anxious, and whatever was making Sarah so nervous wasn't any of his business. Still, the way she kept scanning the road made him feel uneasy. It was as if she wasn't just stranded, she was waiting for something, or worse, trying to avoid someone. Marcus's own nerves began to hum in response to her agitation, though he kept working calmly, wanting to get her back on the road as soon as possible. Once the tire was changed, Marcus stood up, brushing his hands off and giving her a reassuring smile. You're good to go now, he said. Sarah nodded, thanking him quickly, but her eyes were already back on the road. With a hurried wave, she climbed into her car and drove off faster than Marcus expected, leaving him standing there, wondering what had really been going on. Sarah's departure was as sudden as it was hurried. Marcus barely had a chance to register her rushed thank you before she had jumped back into her car and sped off down the lonely highway. He watched her taillights disappear into the distance, feeling the weight of the encounter still hanging in the air. It wasn't just the tire that had left an impression. There was something about the way she had driven off, almost as if she were fleeing. For a moment, Marcus considered whether he should have asked more questions, maybe even offered to follow her to make sure she got where she was going safely. But he quickly dismissed the thought. She had been in a hurry, clearly not interested in lingering, and he had no reason to pry into her business. Still, there was a nagging feeling that something wasn't right. It wasn't just her anxiety, it was the way she had practically bolted the moment the tire was fixed. Driving home that night, Marcus couldn't shake the image of Sarah's pale, anxious face or the way her eyes kept darting around. Whatever had made her so eager to leave, Marcus couldn't help but feel like it wasn't just the inconvenience of a flat tire. There had been something else, something bigger, that she hadn't shared. And while he was glad to have helped her, the encounter left a lingering sense of unease in the pit of his stomach. Back at home, Marcus tried to unwind, but his mind kept returning to the strange encounter on the side of the road. He sat in his small, comfortable living room, a cup of tea in hand, as he replayed the evening's events in his mind. The more he thought about it, the more unsettled he became. Helping someone with a flat tire shouldn't have left him feeling this way. Normally, he would have chalked it up to a good deed done and moved on. But this time was different. He kept thinking about Sarah, her rushed demeanor, her shaking hands, and those quick, nervous glances down the road. It was almost as if she had been running from something, though she hadn't said anything to indicate danger. Marcus had offered her help, but in the back of his mind, he now wondered if there was more he could have done. Was she truly in trouble? And if so, what had she been so desperate to avoid? As he sat in the quiet of his home, Marcus couldn't help but feel a growing sense of dread. He told himself he was overthinking it. He had helped her, and that was the end of it. But deep down, he knew that something about the situation didn't add up. And even though he had no reason to believe he would ever see Sarah again, the unease he felt hinted that this wasn't over yet. The next morning started like any other. Marcus went about his usual routine, getting ready for another day at work. But as he stepped outside to head to his car, something unusual caught his eye. Parked across the street, in a spot that had never been occupied before, was a large black SUV. Its sleek, tinted windows reflected the early morning sunlight, making it impossible for Marcus to see who was inside. At first, he thought nothing of it. Perhaps a neighbor had a visitor. But as he got into his car and drove off, the sight of the SUV lingered in his mind. The vehicle wasn't familiar. He knew the cars his neighbors drove, and that SUV had never been parked on his street before. There was something about it, its size, the dark windows, that felt ominous. As Marcus continued his drive, he couldn't shake the feeling that the SUV was out of place. Why would someone park right outside his house? And who was behind those dark windows? Still, he brushed it off as coincidence and tried to focus on his day ahead. But when Marcus returned home that evening, the SUV was still there, parked in the same spot, as if waiting. His unease grew. He had done nothing wrong, so why did the sight of that vehicle fill him with such anxiety? Maybe it was nothing, maybe he was just being paranoid. But something about the SUV, and the fact that it hadn't moved all day, left Marcus feeling unsettled as the day drew to a close. By the third day, Marcus couldn't ignore the black SUV any longer. Each morning when he left for work, it was there, 
parked across the street, unmoving. Each evening, when he returned, it was still there, as if it had been waiting all day. He had even taken a walk around the neighborhood, hoping to get a closer look, but the windows were so heavily tinted that it was impossible to see inside. The car was starting to feel like a shadow over his life, an unwelcome presence that refused to go away. His suspicion grew with each passing day. Who were they? Why were they watching him? He hadn't done anything to draw attention to himself, at least nothing that would warrant being watched, except for that night on the road with Sarah. His mind kept circling back to her. Could this be connected to her somehow? But why would a simple act of kindness lead to something like this? None of it made sense, and that was what bothered him most. Marcus tried to stay calm, telling himself that there must be a reasonable explanation. Maybe it was just a coincidence, or maybe someone in the neighborhood was expecting a long-term visitor. But deep down, his gut told him otherwise. The black SUV, with its tinted windows and unmoving presence, felt like something far more deliberate. Marcus wasn't just imagining things. Someone was watching him. And the longer the SUV stayed parked there, the more certain he became. By the end of the week, the black SUV had become a fixture outside Marcus's house. It didn't move, and no one ever got in or out, but it was always there, a silent reminder that someone was watching him. The presence of the vehicle gnawed at Marcus's nerves. He found himself glancing out the window every hour, hoping to see it gone, but it remained as if deliberately refusing to leave. His home, once a place of peace, now felt like it was under surveillance. It wasn't just the fact that the SUV was there, it was the uncertainty that came with it. Marcus didn't know who was inside or why they were watching him. He didn't know if they were dangerous or if they were connected to something far bigger than he could imagine. The not knowing was what scared him most. Every time he stepped outside, he felt eyes on him, even though he couldn't see anyone. The vehicle's presence cast a long, dark shadow over his life. The more Marcus thought about it, the more he became convinced that the SUV's appearance was connected to Sarah. He had helped her, and now, somehow, that simple act of kindness had drawn him into something he didn't understand. The black SUV was more than just a car. It was a message. But what that message was, Marcus couldn't yet decipher. All he knew was that his life had taken a strange and unsettling turn, and there was no going back. By the third morning, the black SUV had become impossible to ignore. Marcus had tried to shake off the growing paranoia, but the vehicle's presence was relentless. No matter the time of day, it was there, dark, still, and watching. He had thought about approaching it, knocking on the window, but something about the way it just sat there, unmoving, filled him with an instinctive sense of caution. Whoever was inside clearly didn't want to be seen. As each day passed, Marcus grew more restless. The feeling of being watched had begun to affect him at home, where he would glance out his window constantly, hoping the SUV had disappeared, but it never did. It was like a shadow over his life, and with each hour that it stayed, the questions swirling in his mind only intensified. Was this really about Sarah? Was someone keeping tabs on him because of that one night on the road? Marcus began to doubt his own instincts. Maybe he was imagining things. Maybe the car wasn't watching him at all. But every time he tried to convince himself that it was just a coincidence, he would catch a glimpse of the SUV out of the corner of his eye, and the uneasy feeling would return. Whoever was in that car had a reason for being there, and Marcus couldn't shake the fear that it had everything to do with the woman he had helped. The mystery of the black SUV consumed Marcus's thoughts. He couldn't help but wonder about the people, or person, behind the heavily tinted windows. Each time he looked at the vehicle, he imagined someone watching him, tracking his every move. Was it a single person? A group? And why hadn't anyone approached him yet? The silence from whoever was inside the car only added to the tension, leaving Marcus to fill in the blanks with his own suspicions. Marcus considered different possibilities. Maybe it was someone connected to Sarah, someone trying to protect her, or perhaps someone who had been after her that night on the road. If that were true, what did they want from him? He had only stopped to help, nothing more. The uncertainty gnawed at him, and every time he passed by the SUV, 
The urge to knock on the window and demand answers grew stronger, but fear held him back. What if confronting whoever was inside made things worse? As the days dragged on, Marcus began to feel trapped. He didn't want to involve the police without more information, but he also didn't want to live with the constant anxiety of being watched. His life had shifted in a way he couldn't control, and it all seemed to stem from one small act of kindness. Who were they? What did they want? And how long would they keep watching him from behind those tinted windows? Marcus's mind kept drifting back to that night on the side of the road. He had thought nothing of helping a woman in distress, but now, with the SUV haunting his every move, he couldn't help but replay every moment of the encounter with Sarah. Her anxious behavior, the way she had scanned the road nervously, her rushed departure, it all seemed too coincidental now. Maybe she had known more than she let on. Maybe she had been in danger. The more Marcus thought about it, the more certain he became that Sarah had been running from something or someone. Had his act of kindness inadvertently placed him in the crosshairs of whoever had been after her? His mind raced with questions he had no way of answering. He had no way of contacting Sarah, no way of knowing if she was safe or if she had been involved in something far more dangerous than he initially realized. The memories of that night, which had once seemed like a fleeting moment of goodwill, now weighed heavily on Marcus's mind. He realized that Sarah's fear hadn't been just about the flat tire. There had been something bigger going on, and whatever it was, it had followed him home. The SUV was proof of that, and Marcus knew that until he figured out the truth, he wouldn't be able to shake the feeling that his simple act of kindness had entangled him in something much larger. Marcus's curiosity had finally reached a breaking point. After days of watching the SUV from a distance, he decided it was time to confront the situation head on. He couldn't live in fear, constantly wondering who was watching him and why. If this was about Sarah, he needed to know. If the people in the SUV had answers, Marcus was determined to get them. His heart raced as he prepared himself to approach the vehicle for the first time. As he stepped out of his house, the cool evening air wrapped around him, adding to the tension already building inside. Marcus walked slowly toward the SUV, his eyes locked on its dark, tinted windows. His pulse quickened with each step, but he forced himself to remain calm. He had no idea what to expect, but he knew he couldn't live under the shadow of uncertainty any longer. It was time to confront whoever had been watching him for the past few days. When Marcus reached the side of the SUV, he knocked on the window, his hand trembling slightly. For a long moment, there was no response. The car remained still, the tinted glass revealing nothing of the occupants inside. But just as Marcus was about to knock again, the window rolled down a crack, just enough for a voice to speak through the small opening. We've been waiting for you, Mr. Johnson, the voice said coolly. It's time we had a talk. Marcus's breath caught in his throat as the window of the SUV rolled down just enough for him to hear the voice inside. The man's tone was calm, almost too calm, as if he had been expecting this moment all along. Marcus couldn't see the speaker's face, only the faint outline of a figure sitting in the shadows of the vehicle. For a moment, he considered turning back, walking away from this strange encounter. But something in the man's voice stopped him. It wasn't a request, it was a command. Who are you? Marcus asked, his voice steady despite the growing tension inside him. He wanted answers. The SUV had been outside his house for days, and now this man was acting like it had all been planned. The voice from inside the car responded without hesitation. We're here on behalf of the Montgomery family. The name meant nothing to Marcus, but the weight with which the man said it made it clear that he was supposed to recognize its significance. The Montgomery family? Marcus's mind raced as he tried to make sense of the situation. Was Sarah connected to them somehow? He had never heard of the family but the tone of the man's voice suggested that they were people with influence, people who could make things happen. Marcus's heart pounded in his chest as he realized that this was far more complicated than he had imagined. Helping Sarah had led him to this moment, standing outside a black SUV, about to be pulled into something far beyond his control. The voice from inside the SUV had an eerie calmness to it, a tone that suggested control and authority. Mr. Johnson, the man continued, 
We know you helped someone recently, Sarah Montgomery. Marcus's stomach dropped at the mention of her name. He had suspected that the SUV's appearance had something to do with Sarah, but hearing it confirmed sent a chill down his spine. How did they know his name? How did they know about the tire change? And why were they here now? We'd like to thank you for your kindness, the voice said, but there was something off about the way he said it. It didn't feel like gratitude. It felt like an obligation. Marcus's heart pounded as the man continued speaking. Sarah is very important to us. You did us a favor and we'd like to return it. Marcus wasn't sure if this was a genuine offer or a veiled threat. Everything about the situation felt wrong, from the anonymity of the speaker to the way the black SUV had silently stalked him for days. I don't need anything in return, Marcus replied, his voice firmer than he expected. But the voice in the car didn't seem to take no for an answer. You may not think you do, Mr. Johnson, but you'll want our help soon enough. With that, the window rolled up and the engine of the SUV roared to life. The vehicle pulled away from the curb and disappeared down the street, leaving Marcus standing there, his mind spinning with more questions than answers. Marcus stood frozen on the sidewalk as the black SUV disappeared into the distance. The name Montgomery echoed in his mind, accompanied by a sinking feeling in his gut. The voice had mentioned the family as though they were a powerful, almost untouchable force. Who were they? And why did they care so much about Sarah? Marcus had lived a simple life, far removed from the kind of people who wielded power and influence. Yet here he was, seemingly entangled with one of the most influential families in the area. He returned home, but his thoughts remained focused on the conversation with the man in the SUV. The tone of the exchange wasn't just a casual thank you for helping Sarah. It felt more like a warning, or worse, an invitation into something dangerous. Marcus wasn't interested in being part of their world, whatever that world was. But now it seemed he had little choice. The Montgomery family had noticed him, and they weren't going to leave him alone. The more he thought about it, the more questions flooded his mind. What kind of trouble was Sarah in? Why had she been so nervous that night? And why had the Montgomery family taken an interest in him? The warning the voice had left him with, you'll want our help soon enough gnawed at Marcus. He didn't want to be a part of this, but it was clear that the Montgomerys had other plans. A few days passed without any sign of the SUV, and Marcus started to hope that the Montgomery family had moved on. But just as his life began to feel normal again, the black SUV reappeared, this time pulling into his driveway. Marcus watched from the window, his heart sinking as he saw two men step out of the vehicle. Both were dressed in dark suits, their expressions unreadable. Marcus knew they hadn't come to thank him with a handshake and a smile. Whatever they wanted, it was bigger than a simple reward. Reluctantly, Marcus stepped outside to meet them. One of the men introduced himself as Mr. Price, a representative of the Montgomery family. We've come to offer our gratitude, he said, his voice smooth but hollow. Price explained that the family was prepared to reward Marcus for his help, financially, of course. The way he spoke about it, though, made it sound less like a gift and more like a deal. There was no mention of what would happen if Marcus refused. Marcus didn't need money, and the thought of accepting something from the Montgomerys felt wrong. I'm glad I could help Sarah, but I don't need anything in return, he said firmly. The men exchanged a quick glance before Mr. Price responded. It's not just about the tire, Mr. Johnson. You've done more than you know. Let us show our appreciation. But Marcus could feel the weight of their words. The offer wasn't a reward. It was a hook, a way to pull him deeper into whatever dangerous game the Montgomerys were playing. Marcus could feel the tension in the air as the men continued to stand before him, their offer hanging between them like a trap waiting to be sprung. The more they spoke, the more it became clear that this wasn't an invitation he could decline without consequences. The Montgomery family didn't simply offer rewards, they made deals. And once you were in, you were in for good. The casual mention of doing more than you know made Marcus uneasy. What had he stepped into by helping Sarah? The men were polite, but their insistence had an edge to it, a reminder that refusing their gratitude might not be in his best interest. We only want to make sure you're taken care of, Mr. Johnson, Mr. Price added with a thin smile. But Marcus wasn't fooled. 
This wasn't about taking care of him. It was about control. He could feel it in the way they spoke, in the subtle pressure they applied with each word. Despite the growing sense of dread, Marcus stood his ground. I don't want anything from you, he repeated, his voice steady but tense. The men exchanged another look, their expressions unreadable. Finally, Mr. Price nodded slowly. We understand. But if you change your mind, you know how to reach us. With that, they turned and left, leaving Marcus standing in his driveway, the weight of their invitation still pressing heavily on his shoulders. He had refused, but deep down, Marcus knew the Montgomery family wasn't done with him. That night, Marcus lay awake in bed, his mind swirling with thoughts of the Montgomery family. He knew that the wealthy and powerful operated by their own rules, but until now, he had never been close enough to see how they truly worked. The men who had come to his door weren't just offering gratitude, they were testing him, pulling him into their web of influence. It was a world far removed from the life Marcus knew, and it made him feel vulnerable in ways he never had before. He wondered what kind of power the Montgomerys wielded. They clearly weren't ordinary people. They had resources, connections, and the ability to keep an eye on him without him even knowing it. The SUV had been proof of that. Marcus couldn't shake the feeling that he had stumbled into something much bigger than a simple act of kindness. The Montgomerys were playing a game, one with rules he didn't understand. And now, for better or worse, he was a part of it. But what frightened Marcus most was the realization that the Montgomerys weren't just offering a reward. They were making him part of their world. The wealthy and powerful didn't operate in the same reality as everyone else. And once you were in, there was no getting out. Marcus had spent his whole life avoiding trouble, living simply and honestly. But now, the world of the wealthy had come to his doorstep, and he didn't know how to keep it from pulling him in. In the days that followed, Marcus couldn't shake the feeling that the Montgomerys were still watching him, even if the black SUV didn't return. The encounter with Mr. Price had left him rattled, and though the men had left politely, their presence lingered in his mind like a shadow. He knew the offer wasn't as simple as it seemed. Accepting their reward would mean stepping into their world, a place where favors came with strings attached. But refusing might carry consequences of its own. Marcus found himself weighing his options, unsure of what to do next. Should he reach out to the Montgomerys and accept their help, knowing full well that it would come with a price? Or should he continue to stand his ground, hoping that they would leave him alone? The problem was, Marcus wasn't sure how much choice he really had. The Montgomery family wasn't the type to take no for an answer, and their reach extended further than he could imagine. As much as he wanted to walk away from the situation, Marcus knew that the Montgomerys had the power to affect his life in ways he couldn't predict. Their influence could be felt everywhere, even in places where people thought they were safe. Marcus didn't want to be indebted to them, but he also didn't want to make an enemy of them. The options before him seemed to lead in different directions, but both carried risks that could change his life forever. With each passing day, the weight of the decision grew heavier on Marcus's shoulders. He had always prided himself on his independence, his ability to live his life on his own terms. But now, he was faced with a choice that could alter the course of his future. The Montgomery family's offer loomed over him like a dark cloud, and Marcus knew that whichever path he chose, there would be no turning back. This was bigger than anything he had faced before, and the stakes were far higher than he had ever imagined. The problem wasn't just the offer, it was the implication behind it. Marcus had been drawn into a world he didn't understand, a world where power and influence dictated every move. He had always believed in doing the right thing, but what was the right thing in this situation? Should he accept the Montgomery's help knowing it would tie him to their world? Or should he refuse, risking whatever consequences might follow? It was a decision that weighed on him night and day, and no matter how hard he tried, Marcus couldn't find a clear answer. The offer felt like a trap, but refusing it felt like an even greater risk. In the end, Marcus knew that the choice he made would change his life forever, and there was no easy way out. The Montgomerys had shown him the door to their world, now it was up to him whether to step through or turn away. As the days passed, the Montgomery family's offer felt less like a gesture of goodwill and more like a warning. 
The smooth words of Mr. Price, the calm voice in the SUV, they all carried an undertone that Marcus couldn't ignore. The Montgomerys weren't used to hearing no, and Marcus's refusal had undoubtedly registered with them. The problem was that they hadn't outright threatened him. They had merely suggested that refusing their generosity wasn't a wise decision. The more Marcus thought about it, the clearer it became. The Montgomery family didn't operate in straightforward ways. Their reward was a means of control, and their offer was laced with consequences. Marcus had always valued his independence, but he knew now that turning down the family's offer might come with a cost he hadn't yet considered. They had shown their hand, but there were layers of their world he still didn't understand. Every time Marcus replayed his conversations with Mr. Price, he felt the underlying message more sharply. The words may have been polite, but the intent was clear. The Montgomerys had noticed him, and they had made an offer. What happened next would depend on whether Marcus accepted their terms or continued to reject their dangerous invitation. As Marcus continued to refuse the Montgomery family's advances, a subtle but undeniable tension crept into his life. The black SUV, which had once been a permanent fixture outside his house, was no longer there every day, but Marcus could still feel the presence of the family's influence. It was like an invisible hand, always hovering over him, waiting for him to make the wrong move. Refusing their offer hadn't ended things. It had only delayed the inevitable. Marcus knew that his refusal had placed him in a precarious position. The Montgomerys had offered him a chance to be on their good side, to be taken care of, as Mr. Price had put it. But now that he had declined, Marcus worried about what might come next. The Montgomerys were powerful, and powerful people rarely accepted rejection gracefully. There was no telling what they might do to someone who turned them down. Though Marcus tried to go about his life as normally as possible, the weight of his decision followed him everywhere. He could sense that something was brewing, even if he couldn't see it yet. The Montgomery family had let him refuse once, but Marcus had a feeling they wouldn't be so generous a second time. The danger was real, and it was closing in, even if he couldn't pinpoint exactly where it would strike. Despite the danger of refusal, Marcus wrestled with his conscience. He knew the risks of rejecting the Montgomery family's offer, but the idea of accepting their help felt like a betrayal of his own principles. Marcus had always lived a simple, honest life. He worked hard, helped others when he could, and stayed out of trouble. Accepting a reward from a family like the Montgomery's, a family whose power came with hidden costs, felt like stepping into a world he didn't belong in. His mind was torn, on one hand, accepting the Montgomery's offer would bring him protection and possibly even wealth. But on the other hand, it would come with strings attached, strings he couldn't control. The Montgomery's were the type of people who expected favors in return. And once he was in their debt, Marcus knew it would be nearly impossible to get out. Was a moment of peace worth a lifetime of obligation to them? Each day, Marcus felt the pressure mounting. He had already refused once, and while the Montgomerys hadn't reacted with open hostility, he knew they were waiting. The question was, what would happen if he refused again? And perhaps more importantly, what would happen if he accepted? Marcus's internal struggle raged on, leaving him sleepless and anxious. No matter what he chose, there would be consequences, and Marcus wasn't sure which was worse. Marcus couldn't shake the feeling that all of this, the SUV, the Montgomery family, the pressure, had stemmed from a single moment of kindness. It seemed impossible to believe that helping a woman change her tire could lead to such life-altering consequences. He had done what anyone else would have done, but now his world was unraveling because of it. The weight of that innocent act was crushing, as if he had unknowingly opened the door to something far more dangerous. In the beginning, it had seemed so simple, Sarah had been stranded, and Marcus had stopped to help, not thinking twice about what might come next. But now, as he looked back on the encounter, Marcus realized how much he had underestimated the situation. He had walked into Sarah's world without knowing it, and her world was filled with people like the Montgomerys, people who didn't take kindly to strangers getting involved in their affairs. The more Marcus thought about it, the more he realized that there was no such thing as an innocent act in a world like Sarah's. His kindness had made him a part of something bigger, something darker, 
And now, no matter what he did, he couldn't go back to the way things were. The Montgomery family had seen to that. What had once been a simple, selfless gesture was now the source of his greatest burden. As Marcus continued to navigate his uneasy relationship with the Montgomery family, bits and pieces of the truth began to unravel. Sarah's connection to the family wasn't as simple as he had thought. Through whispers and rumors, Marcus began to hear more about the Montgomerys, how they controlled everything from business to politics in the region, and how they used their wealth and influence to silence anyone who crossed them. But there was more to it than that. Sarah wasn't just connected to the family. She was a key figure in their inner circle. Marcus learned that Sarah was the daughter of William Montgomery, the patriarch of the family, a man whose power extended far beyond what most people could imagine. The night Marcus had helped her, she hadn't been just a stranded woman in need. She had been in trouble, and Marcus had unknowingly stepped into the middle of something dangerous. The more Marcus uncovered, the clearer it became that Sarah had been running from something, or someone. As the secrets of the Montgomery family slowly came to light, Marcus realized that his involvement in their affairs was no accident. He had been pulled into their world not just because of his kindness, but because they needed something from him. What that something was, Marcus wasn't sure yet. But the more he learned, the more he understood that the Montgomerys weren't just powerful, they were dangerous, and they weren't done with him. The more Marcus learned about the Montgomery family, the more he realized just how powerful they truly were. Their name carried weight in every corner of the city, from the business elite to the local politicians. The Montgomerys didn't just have money, they had influence, the kind that could make or break a person's life with a single phone call. And Marcus had unknowingly crossed into their world by helping Sarah that night. He began to see how the Montgomery name worked as both a shield and a weapon. People respected the family, but they also feared them. The Montgomerys had the ability to make problems disappear, and they didn't shy away from using their power to control those around them. Marcus had never been involved with people like this before, and the thought of being on their radar filled him with dread. It wasn't just the name that held power, it was the network of people connected to it. The Montgomerys had allies everywhere, people who owed them favors and who were willing to do their bidding. Marcus understood that crossing the Montgomery family wasn't just dangerous, it was life-altering. And now that he was involved, there was no turning back. The power behind the Montgomery name was real, and it was far more dangerous than Marcus had anticipated. As Marcus delved deeper into the truth about the Montgomery family, he began to realize that their power came with enemies, enemies who were lurking in the shadows, waiting for the right moment to strike. The more he learned about Sarah's situation, the more he understood that her fear that night hadn't been irrational. She had been running from something dangerous, and by helping her, Marcus had unknowingly placed himself in the crosshairs of those who sought to harm the Montgomerys. It wasn't just the family's wealth and influence that made them targets, it was the way they operated. The Montgomerys had made enemies over the years, and some of those enemies were closer than Marcus had realized. Whispers of betrayals, rivalries, and power struggles reached his ears, and Marcus began to understand that his involvement with Sarah had made him a potential pawn in a much larger game. The Montgomerys had enemies who wouldn't hesitate to use him if it served their purpose. Everywhere Marcus went, he felt like he was being watched. The black SUV hadn't returned, but the feeling of being under surveillance never left him. He didn't know who he could trust, and the more he learned, the more dangerous his situation became. The Montgomerys had pulled him into their world, but now Marcus was beginning to see that they weren't the only ones watching him. The shadows were closing in, and Marcus wasn't sure how long he could stay out of harm's way. The realization that he was caught between two powerful forces left Marcus feeling more isolated than ever. He had stepped into a world of secrets, alliances, and enemies, and there was no guide to navigate the dangerous waters. Every move he made could have consequences, whether it was dealing with the Montgomerys or protecting himself from their enemies. Marcus had always been an independent man, but now he was facing forces far beyond his control. His mind raced with possibilities. Should he try to align himself with the Montgomerys, knowing that it could mean giving up his freedom? Or should he keep his distance and hope that their enemies wouldn't target him next? 
Each choice carried risks, and the unknown weighed heavily on Marcus's mind. He had no idea what the next day would bring, and the uncertainty of it all was paralyzing. With every passing moment, Marcus realized that his life had changed in ways he could never have predicted. He had once been a man of routine, of quiet and peace. Now he was caught in a web of power, influence, and danger. And the worst part was, he had no idea how to get out. The unknown stretched before him like a dark road, and Marcus knew that whichever path he chose, it would be filled with challenges he wasn't prepared to face. In the end, Marcus realized that his simple act of kindness had set him on a path he could never have imagined. What had started as a selfless gesture, helping a woman change her tire, had spiraled into a dangerous game of power and influence. The Montgomery family had noticed him, their enemies had taken note, and now Marcus found himself at the center of a conflict he didn't understand. The road ahead was filled with uncertainty and danger, and there was no going back to the life he had once known. Despite the risks, Marcus couldn't shake the feeling that there was something more at play. He had become a part of something bigger than himself, something that extended far beyond his small act of kindness. The Montgomerys weren't just a powerful family. They were players in a larger game, one that Marcus had unwittingly stepped into. Whether he liked it or not, he was now a part of their world, and the decisions he made would determine his fate. As Marcus stood on his porch, looking out at the quiet street, he couldn't help but wonder where the road would lead. The black SUV was gone, but its presence still lingered in his mind. The Montgomery family had opened the door to a new reality for him, a reality filled with both opportunity and danger. Now it was up to Marcus to decide how to navigate the dangerous road ahead, knowing that every step could change his life forever.